Repetitive self-criticism can be really damaging and can really diminish the quality of your life and how you feel long term. And I think part of the reason that it's so harmful is because you can't see it from the outside. People can't tell that you are self-critical because you don't necessarily have to vocalize what you're feeling. So you could be at a party looking amazing and you know wearing gorgeous clothes and you know smiling and people could look at you and think that you're happy. But really on the inside, if you are thinking critical things about yourself, if you are you know telling yourself that you don't look good or that you're not a good person or that you're stupid or that you shouldn't have said that or you shouldn't have thought that or you shouldn't have done that then it can really diminish the quality of your experience. You could look like you're having fun, but really you could be having an awful time just because of the thoughts that you're having in your head. And I've personally had experience with that. And so I wanted to share what really worked to help me break that bad habit. And from time to time, I will have you know a negative thought that just comes out of the blue and I'm criticizing myself in my mind and I know the thoughts aren't true. I know now how to cope with it and how to turn it around into something positive and, and feel good again. The reason I care so much about this is I really have a deep belief that life is meant to be enjoyed and I appreciate the fact that I get to be alive and that I get to have this opportunity to experience life on earth and I've always been a very, um, I guess, idealistic person. I, I want to create the best life possible. I want to experience joy and just experience everything that life has to offer and you can't really do that when your thoughts are working against you. And so because of that, I had to really learn to get negative thoughts in check and use my mind for the good and to create positive things in my life. So first I want to go over why does self-criticism exist in the first place? It's not natural. Animals don't do it. Little kids don't do it. You don't hear toddlers running around saying that their thighs are too fat or that, you know, that they look ugly compared to someone else or that, you know, they don't have enough money. It's not something that is natural. It's something that is learned and it's something that we see other people do and we pick up. So I'm going to go over some of the things that can be the reason for repetitive self-criticism. Okay, so one of the reasons is it's a form of protection. Now that might sound weird, like why would you call yourself stupid in your mind to protect yourself? But part of it is a fear of other people saying hurtful things to you first. So you kind of say them to yourself first so that you're like, okay, if I call myself ugly and if I call myself stupid, then it won't hurt so bad if someone else rejects me and says those things to me afterward. It doesn't necessarily make sense. It's not something that is logical. It's kind of in your subconscious mind. And so that's why half of the time we don't even realize that we're saying critical things to ourselves unless we really pay attention to our thoughts. It just kind of manifests as an overall bad feeling or feeling like you're in a bad mood or just feeling sad and insecure, but you don't really realize why. And really it's just a buildup of repetitive negative things that you're telling yourself. Another reason that we criticize ourselves is just simply habit. We hear other people criticizing themselves when we're little. So sometimes you might not even realize it because under the age of six, your conscious mind isn't really developed the same way an adult is. So you're just running on your self subconscious mind, which is like a tape recorder. So you just accept everything that other people around you say as true. So if you grew up and your mom was constantly saying, I look fat, I look old, or I, I'm so stupid, I'm so forgetful, whatever, then when you get older, you might not even be aware of the fact that you're doing it, but it's just because that's what you saw and we're creatures of habit. We mimic what we see other people doing. So it really takes some work to be aware, first of all, that you're even doing it and then to decide that you're going to do something about it and that you don't want those habits for yourself anymore. And another one, which might seem kind of counterintuitive, is the fact that you might have a belief that loving yourself is selfish or thinking that you're beautiful is vain or thinking that you are capable and wonderful is 
somehow shameful and that you should belittle yourself. Some people also have that belief subconsciously that they're not even aware of. And that's why a lot of times people sabotage themselves. So if you found yourself about to achieve, achieve great success and then for some reason you kind of block that success from your life or don't let it really happen, um, then it could be that underlying belief that, you know, it's a bad thing to achieve success or that, you know, you're a selfish person if you, if you think about yourself and love yourself. And so I'm going to share with you what kind of clicked in my mind for me and made me realize that I could do something about the thoughts that I have in my mind. And it was one day, I don't remember when it was, but I was having, you know, critical thoughts about myself and I was having thoughts about my appearance and, you know, saying, oh, this or oh, that, like just criticizing myself. And there were really minor things and it was unnecessary. And I just thought I would never talk to a friend like this. I had that thought. I'm like, I'm, I am so loving to other people and so kind to other people. There's no way I would ever say these things that I'm saying to myself in the mirror to anyone else. So why am I allowing myself to say it to me? And then I thought, well, what if I were to speak to myself the way that I would speak to a friend? So if my friend said, oh, how do I look? I would never say, what are you doing wearing that? Or you look so ugly in that. Or that's, that's just such a ridiculous way to do your hair or, you know, different things like that, that I would never say to a friend. So I thought, how amazing would my life be if I spoke to myself as though I was my best friend? So this might sound a little bit crazy to talk to yourself intentionally and have a conversation with yourself, but really we do that on a daily basis anyways. We have thousands of thoughts in our mind that we don't vocalize, that we don't share with other people, and it's like a conversation between you and yourself. So I kind of just imagined myself at that time as being two people. One was me, the person thinking the thoughts, and the other one was the person receiving the thoughts, the one who I'm speaking to when I speak in the mirror or speak to myself in my mind. And I thought, what would my life be like? How would my life change if I started to look at myself, the person I was speaking to, as someone really beautiful, as this girl that I really respect and who is so intelligent and so amazing and who I am just cheering on and I want the best for. Like my very best friend in life who, you know, I can confide in and who I respect. And it, it just kind of clicked to me like, oh my gosh, my life would be amazing if, if I treated myself like that because there's no way that you know, I would treat my best friend like that. There's no way that I would tell my best friend that she's stupid or that she shouldn't go for her dreams or that she's not capable of achieving what she wants to achieve. No, I, I'm, I'm the biggest encourager. Like I'm the one who wants to see my friends succeed and see them be happy and compliment them. And I'm the type of girl that when I see someone else who looks great, I'm like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. I love what you're wearing. You're so pretty, you're so awesome. So if I treat other people that way, then with the hopes that that will, you know, bring them up and make them feel good. And what if I treat myself that way and actually just start to pay attention to the things that I tell myself about myself. And so that was kind of like an aha moment for me. And I'm not going to lie and say that, you know, overnight it was just like, I was awesome at it. And I always said wonderful things about myself but it did make me aware and like start to actually listen to what I was saying to begin with. And it really made a difference over time because I'd find myself saying something and then I'd be like, well, you know what, what if I didn't believe that? Like thoughts are just thoughts. They don't, they're not necessarily true. Things are opinions. Like you could think something about yourself that's negative and share it with someone else and they would say, that's completely false. Like, I don't think that about you at all. Like, I think you're amazing and I don't even see what you're talking about. I'm sure you've had that experience where maybe you thought something about yourself, like even a physical thing. You might think, oh my gosh, like I've gained weight and I look like this and I look like that. And you tell someone else and they're like, are you kidding me? You look amazing. I was just thinking about how you look so slim or how you look so healthy and vibrant. And so, I'm sure you've had similar experiences, whether it's about a physical thing or something else. Or you could feel like, my life is all over the place, I have no direction, I don't know what I wanna do, and someone else could be admiring you for how together your life is. 
So really perception is everything and your relationship for your, with yourself really does dictate the overall quality of your life. And I guess that's why they say like, you know, money doesn't equal happiness or beauty doesn't necessarily equal happiness because you could have those things, but if in your mind you don't feel like you have them, then you're not going to experience the joy of having them. So anyways, this video is a lot longer than most of the other videos I make because I just wanted to, it to be a conversation and I just wanted to speak from my heart to whoever's out there as a friend and let you know that it's okay if you've been thinking bad things about yourself up into this point. If you have been feeling negative and sad and depressed and have anxiety or whatever it is, a lot of other people have experienced that too and you can get past it, but it's up to you. And just know that no matter where you are right now, you can get to a place where you're really enjoying your life and you're really loving yourself and you're really, really happy. It might not feel like it and you might just think, oh, well, this girl on YouTube is crazy. She has her head in the clouds. But I'm telling you honestly from my heart, if, if you will just take the time to start to do the work to love yourself, it might be a journey. Maybe it'll take you a few months. Maybe it'll take you years and a decade, but isn't it worth it? If it's gonna get you to a place where you really do feel the confidence that you've always wanted to feel and that you do really, really start to love yourself and enjoy your life, to me, that's what it's all about. Like, you wanna get to that place where you're happy. No matter what your life circumstances are, you can be happy. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. So yeah, that's it for me today. I just wanted to really speak from the heart. And if you guys enjoy these longer videos and just kind of casual chatting style videos, then let me know, give me a thumbs up or just leave me a little comment down below and say hi. Um, I make these videos for you, even though I haven't met you and I don't know exactly who's watching. I know that Whoever's meant to see this will see this. So have a beautiful day and thanks so much for watching. Mwah.